I want to welcome you tonight to More Monday. I'm on vacation. It's the 4th of July, but I didn't want to miss our time together because I think it's important wherever you are to get into God's Word and to grow. And we can do that wherever we are tonight together. So thank you for joining me. Tonight, I want to talk about losing the weight of comparison. I don't know if you ever feel like you're not good enough. Maybe you feel like you don't measure up. Maybe people have told you your whole life that you're never gonna to amount to any, anybody, anything, or you're not as good as your sister or your brother, or you'll never be as good enough basketball player or football player, whatever it is. Maybe you've been told you're a disappointment and you've gone through your whole life comparing yourself or being compared and, and it just becomes overwhelming and you just feel like you're stuck, that you're not good enough and that you're never gonna be um, anybody in the world's eyes. I was blessed to have a family that was always there rooting me on, saying, you can do it, baby. That was my dad's motto. You can do it, baby. You can go out there and, and you can be that champion. And not only that, they surrounded me and equipped me with everything I would need to have that success. My biggest critic was myself. I was always comparing myself, not so much to other people, I was comparing myself to this standard of perfection that just did not exist. And I about literally drove myself into um, a health crisis because I was always pushing myself and striving to be somebody, something that um, I thought I needed to be, even though in the world standards, really, I really had everything that you could want. I had financial blessings. I had um, world titles to my name as an athlete and world championship titles and all these things, but yet I felt this big because I was always comparing myself, like I said, to a standard that was unattainable. Well, lately we've been doing this series called Lose the Weight, a Lose the Weight series, and it's been based on Hebrews 12, 2. And in that verse, Paul is telling us, hey, you need to lose the weight, anything that's slowing you down in your Christian walk, and you need to cut loose the sin that entangles you and trips you up. And over the last few sessions, more Monday nights, we've been talking about various things that trip us up. We've been talking about fear. We've been talking about hate. We've been talking about prejudice and all these different things, a wounded, offended spirit and um, a lack of faith, all these different things that hold us back. People pleasing is a big one. I can't remember if we talked about that or we may need to. But tonight, we're going to talk about the weight of comparison because that really is a big thing that can hold us back because it's unending. Everywhere you look, there is somebody you can compare yourself to or there's something that you can compare yourself to. There's some standard that you may have set in your mind that that's where you've got to reach and you're always falling short. That was me. But then again, you can compare yourself to people and you can look at what they have or their job or their status or whatever it is. Maybe they're a certain size, they look a certain way and you think, you know what, I'm never gonna measure up to that. Well, you know what God says about comparison? He says it's not the wisest thing to do. And I want to show you this verse. I've got some notes here. But this is in 2 Corinthians 10, 12. And I, I hope that you bring your Bibles with you to more Monday because I like to get in the Word. So let, let's look at that. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. And if you hear my dogs in the background... That's because they're barking, and <laughs> they're right below me. Um, okay, so this verse says, um, Oh, don't worry. Let's see. This is Paul talking. He's talking to the Corinthians. It says, We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. These are people comparing each other. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. Other version says it's not wise. It's, it's not a right thing to do. When you start comparing yourselves, and that's that's really what the church does a lot of times, isn't it? It's like Christians start comparing themselves to each other. And, you know, I, I don't do that. I'm not as big a sinner as they are. And so, you know, on the one hand, you can compare yourself and you feel like you're this big. And then some people fall into this world of comparison and they feel like, oh, 
I'm not as fat as that person. I haven't murdered anybody, so I'm not as big a sinner as that person. And we get prideful. So comparing yourself is a dangerous thing. The word comparison means that you hold two things up side by side and you, you, you look at them. You look at them and you try to decide, I've got to plug my battery in. Um, sorry about that. You're probably looking at me. There we go. Let's see if we can continue that. How about that? I was up close and personal for a second. Um, yeah, so comparison is you hold two things up side by side and you try to see which one's better than the other, which one um, you prefer. You might, if you were hiring someone, you might compare two candidates. You look at their resume, you look at their personalities, you look at different things, their work history, and you decide what's the best fit for you. Comparison is not all bad in the world. I mean, you've got to compare. You, you, you put two, pair, two outfits on and you compare them in the mirror and you decide you know, which one you wanna wear, or two pieces of fruit in the grocery store. You, you want to go home with the better one. But when it comes to your life, if you're constantly comparing and holding yourself up to someone else, it's not gonna work. The only comparison you need to be making is holding yourself up to the Word of God. And the Bible talks about in James that the mirror that we should look into is God's mirror. And when we look into it, we should compare our life to what God says, not to fall in condemnation, but to be convicted and to line ourselves up with the Word of God. So like Hebrews says, we don't have sin in our life that's tripping us up and that's holding us back. But if we fall into this world of comparison, here's what happens. We get into dangerous territory. We, we start judging. We start judging ourselves, and that can lead into condemnation and guilt and shame and the sense of unworthiness, or we can go in the other realm. We start judging ourselves against other people. We get critical about them. We get prideful about ourselves. The Bible says, judge not, lest you be judged. If you start judging someone, you're gonna be judged at the same level that you pour that judgment out on someone else. God does not want us to judge people, and it's dangerous when you do that. The Bible talks about look in the Word of God, judge yourself about God against God's standards, and let that be it. You know, my dad, he, he and my mom were my coaches, and I was a, a professional water skier. I competed for 35 years, as many of you know. But the one thing that really sticks out in my mind that really helped me the most is my father would tell me, he said, Christy, when you go out there and you compete against all these other girls, remember, you're not competing against them. Don't go out there and compare yourself to their scores. You go out there and you be the best that you can be. You go out there and beat Christy. The problem was sometimes I carried that too far because I never felt like Christy was good enough. But the advice my dad gave me was sound advice. I just took it and went the wrong way with it sometimes. But it was sound advice because he knew that one thing, if I looked at those girls and compared myself to all the other scores, then I would ski to that level. I, I would just go out there and just do enough. He's like, you go out there and you just don't even worry about what they did. You just go do the best that you can. And he knew if I did that, I would be skiing in freedom and I would be living up to my potential. And you know, that's really what our Heavenly Father, God, wants us to do. He wants us to live up to the potential that we have as His children. And if we're always comparing ourselves to other people, we're not going to be that unique individual that God has called us to be. So it leads us into judgment. I have some notes here, and I want to, like I said, I want to talk about, you know, some other things that it leads us into. It leads us into division, really, because maybe... You think about in family sometimes, if you start comparing yourself against brothers and sisters and you don't feel like you measure up, what happens is, is you start getting divided. You start getting jealous maybe of what that person has and you don't have and, and families get divided over it. it I remember um, reading in Genesis, maybe you've read this too, where Cain and Abel, Cain was, you know, God, was like you needed to bring this sacrifice and he was angry because God had, had had evaluated his sacrifice and said it wasn't good enough and so Cain started looking at Abel and he started getting jealous of the uh, the approval that God had given Abel and um, Cain fell into division he fell into jealousy 
and the Bible says, Cain, you need to guard your heart because sin is crouching at the door and it seeks to devour you. And that's what happens when we compare ourselves to other people and we start judging and then we get critical and then we get, maybe we get envious because they got a job or something that we didn't and we're looking at our life and then we get jealous and then that sin is jumping in on our lives and it's going to bring division. So um, that's another thing that comparison does. It brings defeat. It brings this discouraged, discouraging um, attitude. It brings defeat. It brings despair. It makes you feel like you might as well give up because um, you, just, you just think, you know what? I'm never going to be enough. I'm never going to be as good as them. And if you give up because you have a spirit of defeat, what's going to happen is, is you're never going to reach your potential. And God has created you with a unique potential. He says, for I know the plans and the purposes that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's his plans and his purposes for you. It says in Ephesians that you were God's masterpiece. You were created, you were fashioned with his, with his hands like a piece of art. Why? So that you can do the good works he's prepared you to do. And if you're always comparing yourself, you're either going to go over here in pride or you're going to go over here in defeat and you're not going to accomplish the things that God has called you to do. You're going to keep getting tripped up because of comparison. It's going to lead to condemnation. You're going to feel condemned in your spirit. Let's see. What else have we said? You know, um, we talked about jealousy. I wanted to share a verse in John 3, 26. This is the attitude that we need to have. If, if you remember, there was John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was the, the, um, the forerunner for Jesus Christ. What his purpose was, was to come and to set the stage for Jesus. And he was to, to let people know that Jesus was coming. He needed to point them to Jesus. He was there to, um, as a sign, really. And Jesus came to John the Baptist, which was a relative of his, and he had John the Baptist baptize him. And that's the whole scene in, in the Gospels where the dove descends, it lands on Jesus. You, you hear God say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And this was the coming out, really, of Jesus Christ where people were starting to recognize him. This was the beginning of his ministry. Well, John and Jesus go on about their ministries, and John knew his place. He knew he wasn't Jesus. He knew he was nowhere near being Jesus. He says, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. He, I have come to serve him, not the other way around. He didn't even feel worthy to baptize him. And so you've got Jesus, and Jesus knew he, who he was, and you have John the Baptist, and he knew who his, he knew what his role was. And John didn't fall into this, this, this um, habit of comparing. He just, he loved what Jesus did, and he embraced his own ministry. But you see that his disciples didn't have that attitude. And in John 3, the disciples, they're starting to get a little, the disciples of John are starting to get a little bit nervous because more people are coming to Jesus Jesus' disciples to be baptized, and they didn't like it. And so they go to John. John's disciples come to John, and they say, Rabbi, this is um, John 3, verse 26. Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, talking about Jesus, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people. And everybody is going to him instead of coming to us, comparing. He's got more people going to him than we got coming to us. Doesn't that happen a lot in ministry? <laughs> Ministries are always comparing each other. Did they have as many people saved as we had? Did they have as much money come in as we had? Man, I, I was I was at a, a banquet for this amazing ministry, and I, I was amazed because in like 15, 20 minutes, they had a million dollars come in. And I'm thinking about our ministry. Like, if I had 10,000 come in in 15 minutes, a couple thousand, I would just be doing a backflip. It would have been so easy for me to fall into this comparison. Man, my ministry's nothing compared to what they have. 
But what it did is it excited me because I saw what God could do. And that's, that's how John is. John is excited about Jesus' success. Like I was excited about my friend's success in their ministry, but the disciples weren't. They were falling into that comparison. They were getting jealous. They were getting a little bit like running to John, like, what are you gonna do about this? We gotta stop this before our ministry falls apart. And here's what John says, and this is what I want us to take to the bank. This is what we need to take with us at all times. When we see other people succeeding around us, this is the attitude we need. John says, no one can receive anything unless God gives it to him from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you, I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for the Messiah. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride and the best man, that's who John, John's saying, Jesus is the bridegroom. I'm just the best man standing up there at his wedding. I, I'm, I'm there to support him. I'm there to, to, to serve him, to be happy for him. He says, that's my role. And I am just simply glad to stand with him and to hear his vows. He's like, I don't need to be in the action there. G Jesus is Lord. And then he says, therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less and less. That is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I say that every time I, I teach y'all a lesson because I get so excited about the word because it is alive and it's true and it speaks to me. And sometimes I'll read something like, oh, I mean, everything's highlighted because I'm like, this is all so good and this is my favorite. And then I'll read another one. No, that's my favorite. But this is really wonderful because it shows me the attitude we need to have. You see someone having success, be happy for them. I am thrilled at the success that they are having. Say that when you see someone, maybe get out of prison before you do. Maybe their case got seen. Maybe they got a different lawyer. Be happy for somebody. Maybe some, your friend got married and you've been wanting a spouse for so long. Be happy and bless them. If you fall into jealousy, you call, then what happens, you fall into grumbling and complaining. Well, I didn't have that, that didn't happen to me. You become, you develop an ungrateful attitude for what you have, and that's what we see there. We are called to be grateful for who we are. We are called to be thankful for what God has given us, and we are called to use what God has given us for his glory. There's the parable of the talents. And if you think about that parable that Jesus told, he's like, you know, you had one guy that had one talent and he went and buried it because he didn't think he had much. And the guy that had five talents, and I'm sorry if I butcher this verse, well, he went and invested it and doubled it. And the guy that had 10 talents, if that's the number, he went and he invested his and doubled it. And, and God says, the one that had the least, you went and buried it. You didn't even invest it. Why? Because he didn't think he had anything. But what he had was a lot. That one talent, that was worth a lot. And he could have used it for God's glory, but instead he hid it. And what we do with our talents is we start comparing them to other people and we feel like, well, I can't do what they do, so mine's not as good, so I'm not gonna do it. And then you're not stepping in to what God has for you and you're not being used by God the way he wants to use you and the you're the only one he can use for in that unique way with your life story with your gifts and talents you're the only one he can use and with your style that's another thing that just you have to be so careful especially in ministry in, in anything in life really it's whatever God's called you to do he wants you to do it with enthusiasm. He wants you to do it the way he's created you. Now, I'm not saying go be, don't go change things and be the best version of yourself. Do that. If God has called you to speak, go speak and do it well. But if God's called you to speak, don't study other speakers and then decide, well, I have to do it like that. I've done that before. God has called me to teach the word, but I watch some people and I'm like, man, I can't, I can't do it like that. 
I, I watch some people they have all these notes and I think maybe maybe I'm failing here maybe I need to have like tons of notes and outlines and I go do that and I lose I lose my rhythm I get tied to that to that piece of paper like that that I, I don't even hear the Holy Spirit and flow well other people see me flowing and they think oh well I need to do like Christy does and and just come on and talk and what happens is maybe they need to prepare differently maybe some people go out and sing and they sing one style and you think I need to go do it like that I need to stand like them and do this and then you become them and you're not you so if you start comparing yourself with other people we've talked about all the dangers of it but really what it does is it is quenches what's in you it puts out that Holy Spirit fire the uniqueness is in you and God wants to use it but if you try to be somebody else God doesn't want like a thousand Joel Osteen's and a thousand you know Joyce Myers or whatever he wants one Joyce Meyer one Joel Osteen one Christy Overton Johnson one you we're all unique that's again not to say we don't learn from people uh, to me, one of the best ways to get better at something is you go surround yourself with people who are great in the area that you want to be great at. That if you feel God has called you to speak, go surround yourself with great speakers. Listen, let them coach you and, and be willing to be teachable. But don't put yourself in this world of comparison because you will come under so much condemnation. Trust me, Satan will make sure of it. The whole time they're speaking i know i have followed i had to follow billy graham's daughter and graham lots <laughs> she spoke friday night and i was speaking saturday morning and i'm thinking i have to follow her and it, it you know i realized i just i'm not her i've just got to go be me and if i go out there and just be me the Holy Spirit's anointing will flow through me and it will change lives. And if you go out there and you just go be you, the Holy Spirit will work through you and he will change lives because he has anointed you to do a certain thing. So that's what I wanted to talk to you tonight about losing the weight of comparing. It's a dangerous thing to do. Remember, as I said at the beginning, if you're gonna compare yourself to anything, Compare yourself to God's Word, but realize this, it's also a perfect standard that Satan will try to remind you every day that you fall short of it, but the reality is you do fall short of it. <laughs> the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but that's why he sent Jesus, and Jesus is not looking for perfection. So if that's the standard that you're holding up yourself against, you're, you're in for a long road. Jesus is just calling you to be like him in every way that you can. And when you make a mistake, you don't just beat yourself up with comparison and condemnation and judgment and criticism. You just sit, sit back up, stand back up and say, God, show me where I got tripped up. Show me what you would like me to do differently or better and help me to do it. That's what God's looking for. A person who's after God's heart is not a perfect person. It's a perfect person that lays aside comparison, lays aside condemnation and conviction. And, and well, you do want conviction. <laughs> condemnation and guilt and shame. And you just keep moving forward. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to move forward with him and to be free. And if we are tied to comparison, if we're tied to judging ourselves constantly against the, the people who have or against the people who have not, we'll always be looking around us instead of looking up to the one who has called us to be us. So I hope that's a good message for you tonight. It's a, it's a great reminder for myself and um, just embrace who you are. I'm 50 years old now, and I'm just getting where I'm just embracing. I, I walked the other day across the street, and I thought, you know what? I'm 50 years old, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. 
I'm okay that there's some sunspots and wrinkles and, and maybe I'm not the size that I used to be or, or have those huge muscles where they used to be. It's, I'm okay. And that's another thing. Sometimes we compare ourselves to where we once were and this is just rising up my spirit. Maybe we'll never get back to where we once were. I'm not gonna be in my 20s again, in my 30s, and have the body that I had and the strength that I had to go compete at a world level water skiing. It's just not gonna happen. Those days are gone. But what I can do is embrace those days, the memories, the lessons, and I can move on to a more incredible future. And maybe right now, you, you just want to long to go back to where you were. You're comparing your, your life now to that family you once had or that job you once had or whatever, and you just, you're just stuck. And so you're tied to this, this past and you can't ever go back there. Let it go, let it go and embrace where you are now. Jeremiah 29 talks about blooming where you're planted. Quit comparing all the places you wish you were. Enjoy where you are right now, wherever that is. And I know some of you might be watching in prison or in a hospital room or somewhere and you're think, thinking, I can't enjoy this. Just lay the comparisons aside. Lay it aside and just embrace where you are. If you can't enjoy it, embrace it. And ask God to help you to see how he wants you to move forward. And that's all I got to say about that. I'd like to pray with you if I could. And I just want to thank you so much for your support and for watching tonight and whenever you're watching this morning or today, whatever it is. I know it's a pre-recorded. So, Father, I just want to thank you for just helping these, me have these words, Lord, that I ask and, and humbly ask that you take them and that they would just speak to our hearts, that you would help each one of us to step into the role that you've called us to take on. You call us, Lord, to run the race with perseverance. And we can't do that if we're always looking behind us or beside us or we're always looking down at people or up at people. God, you've called us to fix our eyes on you so that we can run the race you've called us to, to run. And so, Lord, we just shake off comparison tonight. We shake it off. We lose the weight of it. And we embrace who we are. We are children of God. And Father, because of the blood of Jesus, we have been washed of our sin. We have been made right in your eyes. We are holy because of what you have done for us and through us. And God, help us to just embrace that and walk with our heads held high and go, be, go reflect you to this world. Father, we love you. I pray for each person to have just the mighty strength of Jesus Christ operating in them. Bring them to a place of freedom. Bring me to a place of freedom where all we see is you and who we are in you so that we can go out and love the world around us and lead this dying world to a living Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you for watching. And listen, I know you know about our ministry. I always have to point us to it, but Victorious Living, if you don't have our magazine, please go online, vlmag.org, and, and order it. Every, every dollar that you give to our ministry sends one of those Victorious Living magazines into prison, and it's bringing freedom to people. It's helped people to learn lessons like we're learning tonight and so that they can be free, so they can know who they are in Jesus Christ, so they can embrace right where they are and move forward to that better future in Him. So every dollar you, you give us sends a magazine in and we know touches at least 10, 10 lives, and, and even more than that really, because that magazine doesn't leave, and every page is filled with the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. So go to vlmag.org today. By the next two weeks, by I don't know when you're watching, but by mid-July, it's every quarter, we need $35,000 to come in to print that. And that just goes up each time because we're printing more each time, so and delivering more into different prisons. So we ask for your support, and I appreciate you, and I love you. And if there's anything our ministry can do for you, please do not hesitate to let us know. Call 352-478-2098. God bless you, and I love you. Bye-bye.